Hi, I'm your host Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Jan Neudecker. Hi, Jan. Welcome back. Hi, Vasco. Good to be back again. Absolutely. So, Jan, uh, we'll talk about teams that self-destruct in a while. But uh, first, on Tuesdays, we always want to know, what's the book that made a difference? What's the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? I would pick uh, The People's Scrum by Tobias Mayer. I had the pleasure to witness Tobias in action when I first visited a Scrum gathering in Dublin in 2017. I was really impressed by how he uh, ran the opening ceremony and then found out, oh, he has written a book and I ordered it after the conference. What I really like about that book, so it's not a book which you read to start to understand what is Scrum. So there are a lot of great books as well, which definitely had an impact on my career, uh, about understanding Scrum or what are retrospectives and so on. What I like particularly about this book is uh, that Tobias, first of all, has a great style of storytelling and um, he's not afraid of uh, voicing unpopular opinions or different views. Um, I really enjoyed that. Absolutely. And uh, it's great for experienced Scrum Masters and Scrum Masters that are maybe looking for different ways to look at the same problems and not just uh, the same old recipe that, that is applied to everything. Yeah. So, Jan. On Tuesdays, we also talk about teams and how sometimes they become their own worst enemies. We are all familiar with teams that start, starts off as some innocent comment, maybe a, a small change to the daily meeting, whatever that is, that uh, until you go through it, you don't know, but it's the telltale of a problem that is developing and over time becomes a big problem for the team. So tell us one of those stories, walk us through, you know, all of those detailed steps that the team goes through. Let's not jump straight into the problem, but let's, you know, describe for us the, the little symptoms that were developing and growing over time and eventually led to problems. I'm going to take an angle here, which is aiming at a sustainable pace. So um, as, as Agilists, we want to work in a sustainable pace. That's also one of the principles of the Agile Manifesto, which basically means we can deliver value in a constant pace for, for an indefinite period of time. But what does that actually mean? And then what does it mean for a team? When can that uh, not happen? And there's different reasons for that. Sometimes I've seen team uh, teams destructing themselves because they let uh, quality slip, yeah, and they were not able to ship anymore uh, because they piled in so many technical depths. But there was, um, as you already mentioned when you introduced me uh, yesterday, I had a very unpleasant diagnosis, uh, a health diagnosis three years ago which happened by accident and almost did not happen because I was not paying attention to my sustainable pace, which I would say is adaptable to everyone in a team. So I, I had some issues in my in my loin and uh, thought, ah, usually from sports, uh, it should go away after a day or two. It stuck for me for two weeks. Um, but I was like, I can't go see a doctor. Work is it's too important right now. It's too busy. I don't want to let anyone down. Plus, it's not like I'm I'm in, in huge pain. And if I go now, I'm I, people might say, "Hey, you're you're quite." Um, I, what's what's the English word I can use, which is not offensive? Don't be such a sissy or a man up. You don't need to see a doctor for every little pain you have. Or yeah, if you walk out of the office and, and that culture at the time, you you might sometimes hear sentences like, oh, taking half a day off again. And I just was not in the mood to face that kind of conflict at the time. After all, I don't know why it was very untypical for me. I decided to go anyway. And the doctor found out that I was perfectly fine where I had the symptoms, but where I didn't have any symptoms, he found out that I had cancer. I had one surgery. I was uh, healthy after that. And that really shook my entire foundation and my entire understanding of of working as well because i was like okay wow if i hadn't taken this decision to take self-care for myself and hadn't gone see a doctor i might have got, gotten into real big trouble because the cancer would have grown maybe spread and i would have been out for months and maybe never have come back to that team so what does that mean for a team impact? And that made me thinking on, on what similar stories have I heard in the past. And I can remember that I had team members in scrum teams that did not dare to take a vacation because they felt if I'm not here, everything will fall apart. But that in the end will lead to, to, to burnout of that person as well. Yeah, And that's not healthy. That will self-destruct the team because one day or another, that person 
will have an impact on, on not being there anymore. Uh, the, this, the, the worst story which I have heard was from a person that, that had huge pain in, in his stomach and didn't go see a doctor until after the project was delivered. And then they found out that his appendix was already ruptured for a week and that person was out for months. So this is an aspect which became very important to me to talk to the and teams about that. Yeah. So don't make yourself as a team unable to to operate because you don't take care of yourself uh, because usually teams want to perform and want to work well so when when, you, when i talk about or think about self-destruction of teams I, I think it's very often systemic uh, or outside of team factors which impact that uh, or lead to those kind of behaviors this one is uh, somehow more internal i think uh, but also based on um, on the expectations which are brought to a team from the outside you need to deliver you need to perform but i really address it now with teams i start working with like how can we take care of ourselves each and every one of ourselves and how do we behave if we feel that someone else in the team is not feeling okay yeah or show symptoms of sickness of illness and we're, we're in a and a pandemic situation for two years now, I think the topic has gotten more more present that if people don't feel well, rather take care of yourself instead of risking anything. So I think we, we have a good chance of making that easier in future. But otherwise, yeah, especially these topics of um, make it transparent, talk about how you want to behave, uh, what are working agreements you want to have as a team um, to counteract or even to prevent such kind of situations. Yeah, make that transparent and talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think you you highlighted the point that we don't very often talk about here on on the Tuesday episodes, which is that in order for us to be able to take care that a team is finding its sustainable pace, we also need to take care that its individuals, the team members, yeah. find their own individual sustainable pace. Yeah, for me, it has always been a very, um, until I got that uh, diagnosis, the sustainable pace principle was always a very technical one. Yeah, like, okay, in order to be sustainable and not to pile up technical debt, we need continuous delivery, continuous integration, automated testing. I wasn't looking that much at the people actually doing the work, right? And as you say, I think in, in our current workspace, this is not getting the attention it needs. Plus, yeah, certain illnesses uh, like like cancer are, are not, it's like a taboo. People don't like to talk about it. Um, especially with like, in my case, testicular cancer, who likes to talk about his testicles, no one, but it's real. And um, until you get it, it's always like, uh, you don't get it, others get it, but it's real, it's a risk and people need to take care of themselves that will have impacts um, on on how, yeah, how they can perform at work. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, of course, you, you talked about the disease that we are all familiar with. We hear a lot about it on TV and the statistics we get about the, the health of a nation and so on. And of course, that's a very important one. Uh, there are also others that are not actually visible that can't be easily diagnosed even for by a medical doctor, like depression, burnout, uh, and so on, that, that can develop over many weeks and months and, and can lead to very serious problems for the people suffering from that, but are... They are not taboo because of fear in, in this case, but they are taboo because you're not supposed to be depressed. Yeah. You're not supposed to have a burnout, right? Like, I think that that's a, a very important aspect, one that I also mentioned in the um, uh, No Estimates talks that I, that I share at public events and conferences, because it's a very important one. Like the pressure we put on ourselves, like you said, I'm not going to take half a day off because work is too important. Right. Like, and, and if we do that long enough, we will end up falling by the wayside and, you know, either having a stroke or, or uh, not being able to go back to work anymore because of depression, et cetera, et cetera. So, definitely a, a very important point. And thank you for sharing that, Jan. Yep. Tuesday is Team Day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.